uh, here we are for, um, and our Sunday best to talk about the best, which, um, we're saying today is, uh, January Scent Project Beruvuvu. Beru... Beruvuvu. Beruvuvu. Sorry. An extra vowel in there. Yeah, don't get used to the nice clothes, guys. It's the Lord's Day, okay? <laughs> Not fucking around here. So, um... Some history behind this guy, because this is a fairly new uh, addition to our collection. We got, um, we bought this guy for him for Christmas. Um, but we smelled him for the first time in May of 2019. Mm -hmm. So we take a trip every spring and we went to the Big Apple, uh, to Chew York to um, eat food and smell perfume. And we smelled this for the first time in uh, Brooklyn. And we loved it so much, obviously we bought it. Yeah, we, at the time, we smelled it alongside every release from January Scent Project, uh, with the exception of the Atar oil or the special limited edition, like, mm -hmm. extrait bottle that he did. Um, and this is the one that really stuck out. We went in expecting to fall in love with Smolder Rose, um, but uh, Bervuvu was the people's champ it was far really good. away. Yeah. Uh, it was one of the, I think at the time, it was one of the three we left really falling in love with, and we've bought all all. Not of January Scent Project, just three from the trip, and we bought all three from the trip already. Yeah. Um, so this is the box that it comes in. Uh, it's got a little, like, jazzy, post-impressionistic uh, painting on the front. It says January Scent Project. Got some January Scent Project special tape there. The painting on the front, uh, and I think, I also think these little cards that come in, I think are both done by uh, John Bible. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's the Lord's Day. So we're going to pronounce it Bible today. <laughs> uh, he uh, He's both the artist uh, who makes the art and also the perfumer. Yeah. Uh, and uh, nicely enough, on the little cards that he sends in uh, with his perfumes, uh, there's also information on the back. Hopefully that's coming into focus here. He lists... Uh, the oh, notes, the notes yeah. and then also tells you what classification he gives for the perfume. For Bervuvu, he calls it cedar, comma, amber, comma, and spice. And I think that's how he gives, I think, three, like, uh, vague-ish definitions for each perfume that uh, he makes. And that's what this guy is, this is cedar, amber, and spice. Well, um, whether or not it's cedar, amber, and spice, I can't tell you. But I can tell you it smells delicious. Yeah. Um, I think I right now, out of the bottle, I get a lot of the amber. Um, it really makes it uh, sweet and really well-rounded. But it's definitely spicy and delicious. I love this. Um, I think this is a great fragrance. You wore it the other day, and I was drooling all over it. It's really good. I, yeah. don't, I didn't remember loving it that much out of New York, but I knew you did. Um, and then once you wore it again, I'm like, oh, this stuff is great. I think it smells great. Well, yeah, I think I think this is also one of the few fragrances that, like, most of the lists uh, or most of the notes on the list actually do show up in the in the fragrance. The fragrance is so complex that I think the first four times I wore it, I smelled something completely different. Um, now I get I get kind of everything all at mm -hmm. once. It really feels like this is like maximalistic perfume, um, but. Uh, it, it comes across very, like, cedar-heavy, um, very spicy, yeah. very floral. Um, very floral, but not in a typical floral way. Very masculine floral. Thank florals. you. There you go, yeah. Yeah. I don't think this is... I don't think this is very uh, unisex. I think this is very... Masculine. Masculine in regards to a fragrance. Yeah, I think the, the florals that come across in Bervuvu really come across... Um, kind of pulpy, like pulp that would have been just mixed in with, like, woods that got mm, okay. smashed yeah. down. Uh, but uh, first let's talk real quick about the bottle design. This is obviously, uh, this is the bigger guy. He also offers uh, little miniature travel dudes. Uh, the bottle's really solid. It's got this little plastic cap, which hopefully you can see is, like, it's not really, it's a very abstracty shape. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't conform to anything. It looks like a glacier. It's uh, kind of a heavy plastic. Well, not heavy. No, it's a very light plastic. I apologize. The bottle's very heavy, but the plastic is very light. It's very crisp uh, edges there with the nice little, you know, 
uh, asymmetrical bottom. I always love those in the in the perfume bottles, and you got nice thick glass on the very bottom, and obviously you've got that really dark, you know, cedar juice there, yeah. uh, which could come across as rose juice, which is another note in here. Rose and geranium are both big players in here. Um, I don't know. I mean, so that was something I was thinking about but when we were prepping for this video, is that I knew that the juice was red, but when I smell this, red is not the color I think of when I smell this. It, yeah. It's not a... I don't know. I just don't want you to associate the color with what you think you're going to smell because I don't think that, in this case, that it's a relationship. Yeah. No, totally agree. Oh, and I also did want to point out as well the sticker that goes on the front. It's like... Um, it's kind of like... Uh, it, I mean, the printing, I hope you can really see the character uh, there. It, it comes across kind of like Japanese um, high-quality uh, calligraphy paper, maybe. Um, it's got this nice, like, uh, consistent perforation to it, although it's not perforation. I just, the, the label is really slick on these guys. It's uh, it, not like any other perfume brand that I know, so that's, I, I always, you know, it's the small things yeah, that make sure. a bottle. I mean, I think this is a great bottle. Yeah. Um, does, I actually really like the weird top. The weird top is fun. Um, I think that, yeah, I think overall it's a great bottle. It's classic and great, and I do like the rounded edges, uh, or the rounded edge of the bottom of the bottle. Um, in regards to where it houses the perfume, I like the, the gap. Yeah. I think it's great. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And it's also hefty enough. It's hefty oh, yeah. enough that, like, it gives it some oomph. And the sprayer is the sprayer's massive on this thing. It's got a huge like projected spray. It's it's a very nice sprayer. Yeah. What do you what do you think about the the juice? So what do you what do you think when you smell that? What comes to mind? I really get a lot of amber. Like that's what I smell most right now. Mm -hmm. Um uh, I saw one of the notes is mushroom, which I think is kind of fun. I don't really smell mushroom at this point. Um I don't know, I like to me, because of the amber, it smells really sweet, but not like a a sickly sweet, not like a honey sweet, but um Supernatural. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's definitely something where like it's intoxicating. Um it's a very intoxicating fragrance as once you smell it, you just want to like keep smelling more of it. Yeah. Um I agree with my statement, it's very masculine. Um you do get I don't get a lot of woods. I get a little bit of it, but I Really? My nose is a little out of practice. <laughs> um, and some spices. But right now, honestly, I mostly just get the amber. Like, that's what I, I'm smelling right out of the bottle. So I have to say, I mean, th on three different occasions, the, the three different things I got out of this, well, four different occasions. The first time I wore this, it was just cedar. Like, I smelled exclusively cedar. And it, it, it makes sense. There's three different types of cedar in this. Canadian white cedar, red cedar, and Texas cedar. Uh, I think... Uh, woods are very hard to do in fragrances. I think very little focus is put into woods, and often if there are woods, uh, it gets classified as something else. It's often, you know, taken over to the oud category mm -hmm. or, you know, smoky slash incense -y. Um I think to do, like, a very straightforward uh, wood-centric fragrance is very hard, and that's why I think when they are, get done really well, they get celebrated like yeah. big time in the community. Like like Norn from Slumberhouse is a really good example. I mean, that's a cult fragrance. Why? Because most time people put any type of fur balsam or pine, it gets subordinated to another ingredient. Yeah. Um, so that was one time I wore this. The next time it was super rose heavy. All I smelled was like rose and geranium. I think, wasn't that what I was smelling the last time? Yeah. Yeah. I forget what it was, but I kept saying... I was smelling something, and you were like, you're probably just smelling the rose. Because, you, yeah, you said it smells like a sweet floral fragrance. There you go, yeah. But, again, it's super natural. There's nothing about this that would scream anything but masculine. You're super yeah. right when oh, you yeah. say. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but then another time, it smelled very incense-heavy to me. Uh, and uh, the last time, uh, it was very henna-centric. Like, I get a ton of henna out of this guy. Um but really, I mean, when you list the notes, honest, honest to God, geranium, I get it. You know, cedar, I get it. Rose, I get it. Patchouli, you get a lot of patchouli. Ginger, I get it. Amber, I get it. Tonkin musk, I, I get it. Mushroom, eh, I don't super get. 
henna I get a ton of, basil I get a little bit of, honey I get a fair amount of, castorium you get a ton in the base, in the dry down. So, I mean, when they list the notes on this thing, they're, mm -hmm. they're freaking spot on. The, yeah, which, I mean, if I hope you guys saw the image, but it's, you know, like a guy carrying a bunch of wood with some mushrooms growing on it. So I think, you know, this is definitely a representation of... Except you know, he looks somber, which I would not call this... I oh, mean, no. Well, shit, I don't know, man. I mean... I think it's a very serious, but not somber. But the incense, the incense kind of gives it... The incense and the henna give it a little bit of, like, religious, ritualistic, mm. like, kind of, like, meditative. Sure, but it doesn't necessarily make it somber. Yeah, that's true. Um... As far as fragrances go, maybe I'm really biased, but like right now this I think is one of my favorites and not that I would ever wear, but I really like this one on you. I really, really like this on you. So I think, um, yeah, this is definitely up there for me right now. Yeah. I mean, again, I really have to stress like as far as like woody fragrances go, this thing is, is up there with the best of it. It's really hard to beat this guy. And like, I just don't think, uh that this scent really gets enough play. Not a lot of people talk about it. It's and probably because it's a small house. I mean, yeah. January Scent Project is a project for this guy. Um, yeah. Know, yeah. And I mean, when people do talk about the house, it's Smolder Rose that really gets all the love. Uh, I think there are a few people who really like sell, uh, sell Pernicu, I think it's called. Yep, that's what I'm going to stick with. <laughs> um, but Bervuvo, without a doubt, was the champion of the house. There were some that I kind of liked when we smelled them, but mm -hmm. this was one of the two fragrances for the day that I sprayed on my skin to go throughout the rest of the day with, and I just kept smelling it and going, wow, man, this thing is amazing. Yeah. And really, like, it's a lot of notes that are, that are you know, particularly difficult to, to master. I think the cedar, you know, the patchouli, henna, yeah. geranium, you know, even talking about traditionally, like, castorium. These are things that a lot of people have very difficult time, like, doing something positive with blending it into a fragrance and still allowing the note to stand by itself mm -hmm. and be recognized for itself and this thing is just amazing yeah so um so we've talked about the fact that it's very masculine mm -hmm. um uh fragranica cl classifies this as a fall winter i would agree there i do not think it is a warm weather fragrance yeah um I think this is a very sophisticated fragrance. Very, I agree. very sophisticated. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's got an air of class. Yep. To it, um, hence the 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 get up today <laughs> um, to and match such a, a really great fragrance. And it's really it, it's it's loud without being aggressive. Oh yeah. And it sticks around all day and really does like progress through different levels, varying mm -hmm. levels, but. It never stops being like something that you would feel like acceptable to wear pretty much anywhere. Oh yeah, there, I can't think of a single occasion where you couldn't wear that. Yeah. Um, yeah, even you know, just chilling at home playing Fire Emblem, Three Houses, <laughs> rock on. Um, yeah, it's gonna be great. So. So who who do you think would wear this? That's the that's the most difficult question. It is, and the person who keeps coming to mind is actually a real person and not a fantasy person right now. Why? I know. Who's that? Uh, the dude who plays God in Big Lebowski. Oh yeah, the uh, shoot. What is? I don't name? know who it is, but him. You guys know who we're talking about. He's got a giant a giant mustache. <laughs> yeah. And he's like got the greatest voice on planet yes! Earth. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's what I'm. That's who I think. Mm. Um. Again, it goes back to someone who is masculine, but sophisticated. And, I mean, the voice sells it. Um, but that's kind of who I was thinking of. I was also thinking of Clint Eastwood. Mm. That was another person. But again, they're not really fantasy or like fictional people. Um, what about you? What do you think? Um, I mean, I was somewhat thinking of the artist Matthew Barney. Oh, okay. Uh, just because, they, I mean... This is very masculine, not necessarily in a traditional way. And by traditional, I just mean that you would not have grown up with a man, a male figure around who smelled like this. This does read fairly avant-garde to me without being like, without yeah. being like weird and like purposely turn off -y, which depends on what work you look at by him. But uh, I mean, he he really does like, I mean, his work really is about masculinity um, and 
he really does present a lot of traditional images in ways you would not expect. Mm -hmm. And for me, in ways that are very comfortable, but very, like, challenging and very beautiful. So I think that's all perfectly encapsulated in the, the masterpiece for Vuvu, really, yeah. here. Um, so, I mean, we normally talk about people who are, you know, maybe new to the fragrance community. I think um, as we've progressed, we've gotten people who are both new and familiar to the community. Mm -hmm. um, if you are familiar to the community... You, I would argue that this is definitely a must-have. Yeah, try I think it. There's a lot of stuff in her collection that wouldn't necessarily say is, like, you have to own, but I think this is really unique, and I would argue that this is great. And, you know, as you mentioned, there are some smaller sizes, so you don't have to necessarily commit to a, a large bottle. And this thing's not expensive, either. Yeah. I mean, this is, like, this is, what, like 120 mil? I don't remember. I think it's, like, 120 mil. It's it's bigger than just a 3.4. It's larger than that, for sure. But then it's, like, $140 or 100 and something. I don't know. Like, I, I couldn't tell you. Well, it, it's it's not expensive, is the, is the thing. And, you know, at the end of the day, also, it's an independent artist doing yeah. this. Like, yeah, yeah which is also remarkable. Um, that's kind of, if you saw the collection video, that's where our collection has gone in a lot of regards. Mm -hmm. Like, they're, they really are, in my opinion, the independent artists are leading the industry. They're the ones who are making the, the higher quality stuff. They're making the more interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this is just another example. This should be right up there in, like, men's wardrobes with classic fragrances yeah. like Guerlain's Vetiver or Heritage. Or, you know, I mean, even Ancre Noir, something like that. This should be, like, a staple in the men's collection, I think, without a doubt. And as far as, like, new people as well, um, I don't think, as you were saying, I don't think it's so extreme in the avant-garde that someone who's training their nose still couldn't appreciate the fragrance. Yeah. Um, and I think it's something that as you develop your nose and develop your taste, I think, because, as you said, you tried it four different times and smelled four different things, hmm. I think that you know, you'll continue to get more things out of it as you oh, progress. Yeah. So I think, also from a new person's perspective, I think that this could be a good way to challenge yourself and get yourself um, something more avant-garde without being... <laughs> without buying without Secretion buying Magnifique. Or something crazy, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a travel companion, and it, it'll teach you a lot. I mean, it's... Honestly, it still teaches me. It's This is really a master class in blending uh, in natural perfumery and, yeah. and just... In terms, again, of finding those those areas that should be, like, that should just be obvious to everybody. Like, mm -hmm. woody, masculine fragrances should be an obvious category. I think it's fucked up. Nobody really does a lot of things that are, mas like, masterpieces in the category. And the fact that it is so universal um, during the colder months. I mean, you could wear this to work, to a funeral, to a wedding, on a date, whatever. Just don't spray it on a white tee. That's fair. Um, I think, you know, I think you can wear it all the time. I think you'll definitely get use out of it. Yeah. And I think it's also not necessarily a blind wear, but it it could be. I yeah. Think you could easily just go for it as a blind grab and, and be good with it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm singing lots of praises about it. I think it's great. It's, it's great. Yeah, it's great. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what else John Bible can do because the thing is, like, Really, no matter what your collection looks like, if you have a masterpiece like this in it, I'm going to be interested in seeing what else you have to do. No matter what, I'm always going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, so absolutely. This perfect. Well, uh, this was, I think, suggested by someone who watched our uh, our collection video. So yeah. um, feel free to keep other recommendations coming so we can give the people what they want. Yeah, we're populists. Woo! <laughs> okay. Okay, bye we'll guys. See you Thank soon. you.